Hello there, welcome back to another episode of Strife Talking Points. And today I'm going to follow up on a video I did uh, and just kind of get into more detail. Um, some video evidence of what happened during the Mueller testimony. And also to cover this story, which hasn't, I really didn't see it anywhere. It was very difficult to find uh, overall. And that's this from Fortune. Uh, politics, U.S. politics. Democrats lose Trump campaign Russia conspiracy lawsuit. Uh, I don't know if anyone really knew this, but on July 30th, this came out in Fortune. It's a back page, very short article um, from Fortune. Donald Trump scored a win Tuesday when federal when a federal judge dismissed dismissed a lawsuit by the Democratic Na- National Committee, claiming the pr- claiming his presidential campaign conspired with Russia and WikiLeaks to hack DNC's emails. And in the run-up to the 2016 election. Now, the defendants violated U.S. racketeering, computer fraud, and other laws in a, quote, brazen attack on American democracy. According to the suit, in tossing it, U.S. District Judge John G. Kodal, I'm assuming, in Manhattan, Manhattan, so... New York area based his ruling about Russia largely on a single legal issue that while the primary wrongdoer in the alleged criminal enterprise was the Russian Federation under the Foreign Sovereignty's Immunities Act, it can't be sued by the U.S. just as the U.S. generally can't be sued abroad. Trump himself wasn't a defendant. <clears throat> Still, the outcome was a political boost for the president who continues to be dogged by his relationship with Russia, even though, from the Mueller report, from all these investigations, there's no actual evidence of ties with Russia other than Trump building hotels, trying to build hotels around the world, has them in multiple countries. Um, a prominent topic of several investigations underway in the democratic controlled house of representatives this is what our government is doing instead of trying to govern fix laws change immigration change uh, asylum change anything their focus is on just continuing the investigations into the president and trying to get everything out there chump celebrated that ruling on twitter calling it to the calling it an end to the witch hunt um, we're going to scroll down just a little bit. The DNC said it, it was reviewing the decision. At first glance, this opinion raises serious concerns about our protections from foreign election interference and the theft of private property to advance the interest of our enemies. The committee said it in an email, adding that the Trump administration and Republican leaders in Congress were ignoring warnings from the president's own intelligence officials about foreign interference in the 2020 election. Now, I actually pulled up the Senate Intel report. Uh, You can find it here. NPR has it listed. Senate Intel report on election interference. Uh, And it's not too long, 67 pages long. Um, I found it pretty uh, boring to read. Um, Basically, what they stated in this Uh, was that they don't know if this is just general uh, intelligence gathering or what. What they do know is that it appears that no votes were changed, no roles were adjusted, uh, nothing from it whatsoever happened. Uh, All they know is that what they believe to be uh, the Russian government in its capacity um looked at and definitely found ways in and around the different uh, 21 states you uh, election uh procedures they found no evidence of any kind that there was anything happened and then made recommendations on how uh to fix it You can go find this uh, report. Like I said, I found it on NPR. It's the Senate Intel report on election interference. Uh, Basically, 
they state that there's no evidence that anything happened and it doesn't seem to be anything more than routine intelligence gathering by a foreign actor um uh, yeah that's it that's the entire report and what you see uh, the same stuff I'm assuming the U.S. does to dozens of countries around the world all the time. Cardo said the Constitution's First Amendment, sorry, I got a text there, um, prevents the other defendants from being held liable for disseminating stolen materials, just as news media wouldn't be liable for publishing materials of public interest as long as they didn't participate in wrongdoing in getting them. So... If Russia, a foreign state, did hack the DNC and get the emails and then gave them to WikiLeaks, which there's no evidence this happened. There's actually evidence WikiLeaks had them first and then released them. Um, yeah, so if they're saying Russia got it and then gave it to WikiLeaks and the WikiLeaks released it, that's also not something WikiLeaks can be held liable for. They can only be held liable if the company themselves hacked in and got them, which does seem to be, from all the evidence I've seen, that someone on the DNC side dumped the information and then WikiLeaks got it, released it, and of course the U.S., the left media, has to blame Russia. He said, The plausible allegations against the remaining defendants are insufficient to hold them liable for the, for the illegality that occurred in obtaining materials from the DNC. So, WikiLeaks releasing the DNC emails, not illegal. Not unless they actually actively hacked in and stole them themselves, which is not what the DNC is trying to say. They're trying to say Russia did it. So, check for WikiLeaks. In ruling as it did, Kotal appears to have sided with a trio of free speech groups that argued the Supreme Court has protected publication of truthful information of public concern. In a series of cases over the last 50 years, including information that was published even after it was illegally acquired, provided the publisher wasn't involved in its unlawful collection. Kotal noted that the High Court upheld the press's right to publish information of public concern obtained by documents uh, stolen by a third party. In the Pentagon Papers case, he said there is sufficient legal distinction between stealing documents and publishing documents that have already been stolen. So, stealing documents, bad. Receiving stolen documents and then publishing them when they're in the public interest or public concern, not bad. Uh, the DNC didn't show that the other defendants participated in the theft of the information, and it's irrelevant that WikiLeaks solicited the stolen documents from Russian agents, Kotal wrote. So, there's no evidence showing that Trump participated in the theft, that uh, WikiLeaks participated in the theft, and there you go. So, Trump wasn't colluding with Russia, WikiLeaks wasn't colluding with Russia, Trump wasn't colluding with WikiLeaks or Russia, as per the Mueller report, which I've actually got video on here in just a minute. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, who was arrested in April at the Ecuadorian embassy in London, where he was a refuge since 2012, and associated and, and charged with endangering, whoa, sorry, the page jump, endangering national security by conspiring to obtain and disclose classified information. He has argued that he is a journalist and protected by the First Amendment. Hopefully, he comes out of this protected by the First Amendment, and it's done. Julian Assange, WikiLeaks can go back to what they were doing. The Russian Federation never appeared in the case and submitted a statement arguing it is immune from the committee's claims under the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act, blah, blah, blah. The case is DNC Committee versus Russian Federation, blah, blah, blah. So, that's it. Uh, in court, the DNC was unable to prove that there is any conspiring between Trump, WikiLeaks, Russia. It's all out in the, it's all over. And here I want to play first this piece. Um, 
This is Rep. Michael Turner's questioning of Mueller. I don't want to play the whole thing, just want to play a snippet. It's much more uh, aptly and accurately described as conspiracy. Right, so in your Talking words, are, it's not conspiracy. a legal term, so you didn't put it in your conclusion, correct? That's what you're okay That's correct. Saying. Mr. Mueller, I want to talk about your powers and authorities. Now, the Attorney General in the appointment order gave you powers and authorities that are reside in the Attorney General. Now, the Attorney General has no ability to give you powers and authority greater than the powers and, and authority of the Attorney General, correct? No, I don't believe, I, yeah, I think that up. It's correct. <clears throat> Mr. Mueller, I want to focus on one word in your report. It's the second to the last word in the report. It's exonerate. The report states, accordingly, while this report does not conclude that the president committed a crime, it does not exonerate him. Now, in the judiciary hearing, in your prior testimony, you've already agreed with Mr. Radcliffe that exonerate is not a legal term, that there is not a legal test for this. So I have a question for you, Mr. Mueller. Mr. Mueller, <clears throat> does the attorney general have the power or authority to exonerate? Now, what I'm putting up here is the United States Code. This is where the attorney general gets his power and the Constitution and the annotated ver cases of these, which we've searched. We even went to your law school because I went to Case Western, but I thought maybe your law school. Now, that's a little bit of grandstanding there. But what you see is this uh, exoneration, conspiracy, collusion narrative um, being taken apart. What uh, Mr. Turner is doing with Robert Mueller is Mueller put in a word at the end of his report, at the very end, exonerate. He can't, that is not within his powers to exonerate. It's not even something that the U.S. law allows prosecutors to do, exonerate. It's not a thing. School teaches it differently. And we got the criminal law textbook from your law school. Mr. Mueller, nowhere in these, because we had them scanned, is there a process or description on exonerate. There's no office of exoneration at the Attorney General's office. There's no certificate at the bottom of his desk. Mr. Mueller, would you agree with me that the Attorney General does not have the power to exonerate? Uh, I'm going to pass on that. Why? Because it embroils us in a legal discussion, and I'm not prepared to do a legal discussion in that arena. Well, Mr. Mr. Mueller, you would, you would not disagree with me when I say that there is no place that the attorney general has the power to exonerate and he's not been given that authority. You would Again, not. Again, I'm not going to, I, I take your question. Great. Well, the one thing that I. Now, see, there you go. Mueller cannot, does not, the law does not allow a prosecutor to exonerate. What Mueller's doing is he added a word in there for political uh, reasons. He is part of the quote-unquote never trumper group he wrote his report ended it with the a word to feed the democrats to feed the never trump people exonerate could not exonerate even though the u.s constitution the attorney general's office uh codes and the books and information from harvard say that's you there is no exoneration within the law I guess, is that the Attorney General probably knows that he can't exonerate either. And, and that's the part that kind of confuses me. Because if the Attorney General doesn't have the power to exonerate, then you don't have the power to exonerate. And I believe he knows he doesn't have the power to exonerate. And so this is the part that I don't understand. If your report is to the Attorney General, and the Attorney General doesn't have the power to exonerate, and he does not, and he knows that you do not have that power, you don't have to tell him that you're not exonerating the president. He knows this already. So then that kind of changed the context uh, of the report. I, no, we included in the report for exactly that reason. He may not know it, and he should know it. So you believe that the attorney, Bill Barr, believes that somewhere in the hallways of the Department of Justice, there's an office of exoneration? No, that's not what I said. Well, I believe he knows, and I don't believe you put that in there for, for Mr. Barr. I think you put that in there for exactly what I'm going to discuss next. And that is, so the Washington Post yesterday, when speaking of your report, the article said Trump could not be exonerated of trying to obstruct the investigation itself. Trump could not be exonerated. Now, that statement is correct, Mr. Mueller, isn't it, in that no one can be exonerated? The reporter wrote this. This, this reporter can't be exonerated. Mr. Mueller, you can't be exonerated. In fact, in our criminal justice system, there is no power or authority to exonerate. Now, this is my concern, Mr. Mueller. This is the headline on all of the news channels while you were testifying today. 
Mueller, Trump was not exonerated. Now, Mr. Mueller, what you know is that this can't say Mueller exonerated Trump because you don't have the power or authority to exonerate Trump. You have no more power to declare him exonerated than Now, do you see that? That's the part that don't hit the headlines. There is no legal exoneration. What they have is this ability. This conference, you stated any testimony from your office would not go beyond our... All right, hold on. Have you conducted any new interviews? Counsel. At any time of the investigation, was your investigation curtailed or, curtailed or stopped? Or hindered uh, no that's the answer to obstruction at any time during the investigation was your were your curtailed hindered or stopped no were you or your team provided any questions by members of congress of the majority ahead of your hearing this today? is just about what they're doing now your report states that your investigative team included 19 lawyers and approximately 40 fbi agents sorry we're gonna skip ahead was generally, included yes. In your report. generally yes is it also true that you issued over 2800 subpoenas sorry. in your report i'll make this very simple now, this is Doug Collins. Um, I believe he's from Georgia. He's going after Mueller as well. Uh, he's already had Mueller say that his in investigation was not hindered, curtailed, or stopped by any member of the administration or anyone. Nothing. So the obstruction idea is thrown out by Mueller's own words. He was not obstructed during his investigation. You did a lot of work, correct? Yes, that I agree. A lot to. of subpoenas, a lot of pen registers. A lot of subpoenas. Yes. Okay, we'll walk this really slow if we need to. A lot of to. search warrants. That's a... All right, a lot of search warrants, a lot of things. So you're very thorough. See what? In your opinion, very thorough. You listed this yes. out in your yes. report, correct? Yes. yes. Thank you. Is it true the evidence gathered during your investigation, uh, given the questions that you have just answered, is it true the evidence gathered during your investigation did not establish that the president was involved in the underlying crime related to Russian election interference as stated in volume one, page seven? We found... Uh, insufficient uh, evidence of uh, uh, the president's cul culpability. Uh, so that would be a yes. Without, w w I'm pardon. That would be a yes. Yes. That's, thank you. Isn't it true the evidence did not establish that the president or those? No. You'll notice there that Mueller was trying to say insufficient evidence. If there is insufficient evidence that you committed a crime, then there's no charges brought against you. If you had your life looked into by hundreds of FBI agents, hundreds of subpoenas, thousands of depositions over the course of two years. It is very likely any crime would have been uncovered. And only in the most extreme case would there be that now you get away with it. However, this is almost unfathomable that this would happen. He spent two years going through this. Those close to him were involved in the charged Russian computer hacking or active measure conspiracies or that the president otherwise had unlawful relationships with any Russian official. Volume 2, page 76, correct? I, I uh, leave the answer to the uh, our report. So it was a yes. Leave the answer to the report. There was no evidence or insufficient evidence of any kind to show that any member of the Trump campaign had anything to do with the Russia uh, conspiracy, hacking, whatever. Is that any true? Your investigation did not establish that members of the Trump campaign conspired or coordinated with Russian government in the election interference activity. Volume one, page two. Volume one, page 173. Thank you. Yes. Yes, thank you. Again, no member of the Trump campaign had anything to do with anything related to Russia. And you see these men's faces have changed. They were happy and smiling before because they thought it was funny. And now that he's made, it made Mueller actually say there was no obstruction, there's no evidence of any collusion between Trump or any member of his campaign, that they're no longer smiling. Although your report states collusion is not so specific offense, and you said that this morning, or a term of art in federal criminal law, conspiracy is... Now we're going to cut it off there. Uh, basically, what he does here at the end is he, uh, what happens is he goes through and he has him basically say that uh, conspiracy, they drop collusion, go for conspiracy. They mean the same things colloquially and in law. Um, and under the law, they would be thought of as the same act. And that there is no evidence of any collusion, any conspiracy between Trump or any member of the campaign. Uh, Bob Mueller in, could have been deposed in 10 minutes of going through his report. And yet you have all the newspaper headlines, 
all the stuff showing that no, he didn't exonerate him. Well, that's legally impossible. What he should have said and did say is there's no evidence of any kind linking the two together, insufficient evidence to make a charge against anyone related to the Trump campaign, and yet our country cannot let this go. It didn't happen. Our president may be an asshole, but he is not a Russian agent. He is not conspiring with foreign powers. If anything, he's trying to limit the ability of foreign nationals to be in the U.S. If they're here illegally, he's trying to get them out. And yet 24-7 uh, news news about all these horrible things that don't happen because they can pick pieces from the Mueller report and dump it out and act like it is true. There was no collusion, no conspiracy, and the investigation was not obstructed by the president or the president's office. They are focusing on possible pieces of collusion where they think it if this might have happened, it would have been obstruction. If this could possibly have happened, it would have been obstruction. And yet there was none of any kind and we had to go through I believe this was four hours long anyway thank you all for watching listening please like share comment and subscribe um, did you know that the Democrats lost the lawsuit did you know they that a judge said the WikiLeaks dumping the emails is not illegal that did you know the DNC conspired within itself to break their own election rules so that they could nominate a person the people didn't want. Did you know that? I did because I was looking this stuff up and this lawsuit though was new to me. Anyway, thank you all for listening. Please like, share, comment, subscribe as always. Have a great day. This was Strife.